Okay, so in this tutorial we're going to set up some Foley on a cube brick and we're going to use one of the uh, the cube meshes which is already in the Unreal Engine 4. So if we double click this uh, cube uh, mesh and bring up the uh, static mesh viewer here, we can see that it's got collision enabled by this blue grid around this uh, this box here and we can toggle that on and off here just to make sure it's on. If you want to set up collision on one of your meshes and it's not got a collision enabled then you'll need to come up here and select one from here. Some of these are more expensive than others and also you'll need to make sure that uh, collision uh, is enabled in here as well. Okay so the first thing I want to do is create a physical material for this um, this cube. I'm going to use bricks because that's the uh, uh, that's the sound that I've created for this. So um, I'm going to come over to physical material and type um, PM brick. So with that set up, I'm going to go find a material to go and plug uh, my physical material into. So if I come down to materials and I select this guy here, a clay brick, and bring up the material editor, I can then go and slot my physical material in here. Okay, so I'll go back to the meshes folder where it was, just select it, plug it in, and then save that. Cool. And I'm going to save my physical material as well. Okay, so if we go back to the stack mesh viewer, we can now go and plug in that material that we've just created. So go back to materials, and then select it, and just use the, uh, the slot. And there we are. There's our little cube. Okay, cool. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to create a blueprint from this mesh so we can set up physics and add all our sounds, etc., and how they behave. So um, if we go and right click on that and select um, create blueprint using, and then we could call this brick now. Cool, okay, so we're in our blueprint straight away and we can see in the components tab that we've got our brick there. If we select our static mesh route, then we can select um, the physics settings. So we want to simulate physics when it um, awakes in the world. And we also want to make sure that a simulation generate hit events is selected as well. That's going to become important later in our, in our graph. But for now, let's just compile that and save it. And then where's my blueprint gone? Ah, there it is. So I'm just going to bring him into here just so it's all in the same place for me. Okay, cool. So I'm going to bring in this uh, this blueprint into the map. And he's quite big. So I'm just going to scale him a little bit. He's quite big for the sounds that I've created anyway. So I'm just going to lift him up. I'm going to press the praise bar and just twizzle him around a little bit so he falls all dead funny. Okay. So if we jump in then, we should see that it's fallen down to the ground. Okay. Now, I'm just going to go and move my um, place start. Just so as soon as I jump in the world, I can see this happening. Okay. There we are. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to add our sounds to it. So if I go over to audio, I have made um, some simple sound cues here of some bricks. So I've got a, a medium kind of impact here and a small brick impact there as well. I've also set up a, an attenuation node, which is I'm using for both these, uh, these sound cues, but I've set the settings quite wide. In fact, I might set it a little bit wider just for now, just so while I'm demonstrating this, I can hear it. Uh, a little bit easier. Okay, let's go back over to our blueprint. And if we go into the graphs menu, which we are already, and then we select um, event hit. Now, this is kind of this function here is going to fire off every time this static mesh has a collision, basically. So if we go over to the static mesh root in our components tab as well. Do you remember the uh, uh, simulation generates hit events? That that button there is going to make sure that every time it hits something, it's going to fire off a message when we can add sounds to. So the first thing we could do, 
and this isn't the right way to do it, but I'm just going to show you anyway. Um, is play sound at location. Okay, so we could just plug our event hit in here and then go and find our sounds. And let's use the medium one for now. And then at the hit location, we can add that to the location there. Okay, we we'll save that. Uh, you're going to see a problem here. I just want to demonstrate this real quick. See what happened there? There's a, a load of event hits just flooding our, our, our play sound at location, so we're hearing a lot of impacts coming through, and we don't want that. We're going to need to control that a little bit better. So if I exit out there, just show you one more time. It's kind of nice, but as, it's, uh, as it stops and it's actually rubbing up against the floor, it's sending out so many hit events that it's no good to us. Okay, so how are we going to control that? One of the ways in which we could control that is if we get the velocity of the cube and express that as a number, we can then use that to control the volume of this play sound at the location. So when it drops through the air and it lands on the floor, it's not moving laterally or in the X or the Y axis. We know that it's actually going to be stationary on the floor. We're not going to want those sounds to come through quite as readily. So we can just turn them down. That's one way of doing it. And I'll just show you how to do that. So if we come over here, I'll just sever this real quick and go get velocity. What we can do is if we go print, and just turn the contact sensitive menu off, go print string and just sever that as well. I'll plug it in there for now. So this is literally just going to display the, the velocity settings on screen for us um, so we can actually see the numbers that we're working with. So if we just compile that and then come back. Okay. Now you can see all those numbers there appearing and we can use those to um, control our volume. So if we go back over to our blueprint. Okay, so I just want to use one of these vectors on here. At the moment, it's displaying three for X, Y, and Z for us. So if I just come down here and type break and then select break vector, it's going to give me the X, Y, and Z values for floats. Okay, so I'm just going to grab the X axis here and type get um, vector length. Okay, so you don't really need to know what vector length does. All you need to know is that it gives you a positive value because at the moment this will give you a legitimately um, a negative value. It could be or it could be a positive value, and that's not going to be much good to us. Basically, I'm just transducing that number to make sure it's a, a positive by using this vector length. Okay, so now our float's definitely going to be a positive. We can then um, create um, a divide float just to make it a little bit more useful for us. Um, but first, let's actually, um, let's print this string. So if we go print string, just to know what numbers we're dealing with here, and we just come out of here. I'll just go straight into that one instead. Now, we're just going to be printing this x value as a float from the velocity. So let's just check that out. Okay, so we've got some pretty wild numbers there that we can't actually plug straight into our volume control. So let's go back into the blueprint and let's, I think I just saw some numbers that are about 100 or so. So if we divide this by say, I don't know, 60. And then what we can also do, now the number's in a more realistic range, we can use a float clamp. And what that'll do is it'll take that value and make sure that we're only going to get a value between 0 and 1.4, which is going to be quite loud. Let's, um, let's actually print this off. I'll show you something else. 
So print string again. This time we're going to come in here and go back. So we're not only we're going to get that x axis, but we're also going to get the um, the clamped float value as well. And because we've got two numbers on screen, I'm just going to extend that float and just change the color. So the the bright green is going to be our uh, volume multiplier. Okay, so let's compile that and save. Okay, and um, before I forget, I'm going to need to put this back in here. And notice that if you put a float value in the volume multiplier and then take it out again, this resets back down to zero. So that's just something to watch out for. Okay, so it's pretty good, but we're still getting a flood of impact sound as it stops, which isn't quite that good for us. Okay, so okay, so let's tidy up this blueprint a little bit then. Let's um, let's delete this because we don't need it anymore. And if we pull this over here, so it looks a little bit more logical. Um, we've kind of got our velocity volume. Um, network set up so I'm going to comment this out and just call this um, velocity volume and we need to control um, the amount of hits coming through here so one of the ways I can do this just really quickly and it's probably not the best way to do it but um, let's create a do once and then Every time it hits, it's going to do it once, and then we're going to delay for the length of the uh, for the length of the sound. Uh, I think it's around about that. Let's just go check. So it's 0 0.41 of a second that one. We want a little bit of overlap in there. A few milliseconds isn't really going to matter too much, but let's just listen to it and make sure it's okay so I'm going to plug this back into the reset so basically what this is this little network is going to do is every time it takes a hit it's only going to allow one of those hits to come through it's going to play our sound for us it's going to wait um, 0.2 of a second and uh, and then reset and allow some uh, more hits to come through let's see if that actually controls that a little bit better for us That's pretty nice, not too bad. Okay, cool. So, what else can we do here? So, let's see. Let's set up our other network. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna copy it, use Control C, and then paste. And then this is gonna be our lighter impact. Okay, so let's just go over and just plug our sounds in before we forget. Lighter on the bottom and heavier on the top. Okay, so one of the things we haven't done yet is um, attach our um, hit location. So if we come over here and just plug that into our hit location on our sorry, our um, play sound location node, we know that every time it's going to hit, it's going to play our sound at that location and our attenuation settings. If we come over here and pull this off again and go get vector length, or sorry, um, vector length, we're going to get a positive value returned from this hit location, the same way that we've got a positive float value coming through here. So if we take this then and then compare it, go compare float, and then I've already done this. You might want to do the same technique and print a string and experiment with your, your mesh, and please do that. But I think I'm going to choose 1500 here to determine whether it's going to play our a light impact or a medium impact. So if it's greater than 1500, it's going to play our heavier one. And if it's lighter than that or equal to, it's going to play our lighter impact. 
Okay, cool. Let's compile that, save it, and see how we go. No, it's not playing it at all. Let's see what's happened here. The values are quite small. Ah, I see what I've done. So I've not actually uh, plugged it into the volume multiplier. So let's let's do that for both of them. Also, we didn't hear any sounds coming through for our medium at all. So let's just reset this slightly. And also, we didn't actually plug that in. Silly me. Okay. Let's just play. Okay, so it's not perfect, but um, it may fit your purposes um, for adding Foley onto an object. Depends on really, you know, how you kind of how evident this is going to be to the player playing through the world. If it's just an inanimate object which he might knock over, he's not going to be staring at it. It, it might might be passable, um, but you could come in here and add add some more clamps and do some some more work to actually try and hone in on those those uh, elements which you want to make it more realistic or you could just have a physics engine which takes care of it for you but this is kind of using UE4's kind of host physics engine okay so I've just come into the blueprint and I've just smartened it up a little bit better and uh, I've added some comments so you can see what the network's doing I've also removed some of those uh, print string debugging uh, tools that we set up earlier so um, hopefully that's given you an introduction into how we can use uh, floats to control our volume multipliers based off our uh, velocity of our object and also use the hit location vector length to determine which uh, sound cue we're going to play as well so um, that concludes the tutorial if you like the tutorial hit the like button and subscribe for future tutorials okay thanks guys bye bye